So there I was, three days before August was upon us, doing my usual Googling. When I decided to sneak over to Kandao's support page, as I have done for quite some time now, to see if they made good on their promise to release a new version of Studio. What? What is that? Yes! So Kandao has finally released a new version of their image and video processing software, KuCam Studio, for the seemingly forgotten, but ultimately what appears to be the majority of their user base, the Mac users. So it's been a long time coming now, and although they were off by just a little bit for their mid-July release date, here we have it. Right out the gate, you can see that the user interface has been tailored towards the video creation side of this camera. So last I checked, there's still a pandemic going on outside, so I am hesitant to take this camera out and truly put its video potential to work. So until that time where everything opens back up, I'm gonna be using this mostly for going and shooting virtual tours of various locations around Doha. And while I thought this was gonna be a nice, easy way to take a single camera to a location, snap a bunch of photos, come back, and create a virtual tour, it turns out it's not quite that simple. And part of the reasons why it isn't quite that simple is because if you were to use the KuCam software, you are gonna get subpar results. Unfortunately for Kando, if people are looking to go and shoot 360 video, then they're typically gonna to lean towards a 360 action camera, like the GoPro Max or the Insta1 360R. Those cameras are more focused on the action side of it and are able to withstand the punishments of taking them outside and into the elements. The KuCam 8K, however, does offer some really stunning video, but it comes in a package that's not quite fit for taking it outside. So what Kandao has promised then is to utilize this 8K package in a combination between beautiful video as well as providing those 8K photos. With the introduction of DNG 8 and more recently the Super HDR format, Kandao has really targeted virtual tour creation with this camera. But unfortunately, it does fall short of the quality needed to produce these tours. All right, so back to the software, right? <laughs> Okay, so importing photo is the same as before. Click the plus icon, select the photo that you want, and import. So once you import that photo, you'll see that you have a series of checkboxes on the right-hand side that offer up a defringe, color correction, optical flow, and gravity correction. Now, out of those checkboxes, when you play around with them, we can see that clicking back and forth on gravity correction just changes the roll a little bit. I'm not sure what the benefit of that is, Maybe I can reach out to Kando and have them explain that to me. As for optical flow, it appears that this is Kando's way of saying feathering, which is where you have your hard stitch line and then you blend the images across each other where it makes a smooth line to blend things together instead of a rigid line that you can see between the photos. As for why they chose optical flow, well, maybe they were thinking that because we're Mac users and probably familiar with Final Cut that optical flow would make more sense? I'm not really sure. As far as the color correction, every time that I check that on each one of my photos, I haven't really noticed a difference. And the defringe checkbox does make a difference. When you zoom into a photo and check that box, you can definitely see that it is trying to compensate for that fringing. Adding defringe to the process helps, but it really requires a more fine-tuned approach like in Lightroom or Photoshop. Now in the bottom left corner, there is a new section that is called Adjustment. You can switch from Panorama to a reframe option. And as far as I can tell, this is so that you can add animation to your 360 photo with the use of keyframes and being able to adjust different parameters of the photo to give you movement. One gotcha is that the default export size was not set correct, leading to some squashed down disappointment. Once changed back to the required 7680 by 3840, everything was back to normal. So there are some issues with the new release. The minimize button doesn't work, no matter how hard you try to click it. One of the benefits of being a Mac user is that if you take an application and make it full screen, you can then swipe over back to your desktop. Well, unfortunately, if an app is not optimized for Mac, it's not gonna allow you to do this, leading for a full screen view but hiding your desktop. There's still no option to select compression level for PNG 
or to adjust the size of the JPEG. As a side note, I still have not gotten a response from them regarding their PNG export and whether or not they use compression at all. And the most glaring issue, and something that we've been demanding for a while now, is options during the stitch process. Some fine-tuned control, like NPT GUI or other stitching software. Without the help of software like Lightroom or PT GUI, you're gonna be hard pressed to create quality panoramic photos using just Kandao software. Because of these issues, I would say that this release feels like a minor update instead of a major one. In the end, Kandao did seem to take some user feedback, although none of it seemed to be mine, and tweaked their workflow process. They also brought the user interface up to speed with the latest Windows version, allowing Mac users to see what the PC crew has been working with. There is much to be improved on, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Hello there. Welcome to the end of the video. Now that I've got you here, why don't you take some time to scroll down and peruse the description below. Down there, you will find links to all the products that I mentioned in this video, as well as some of these. Now I have to mention that those links are affiliated and a small portion of those sales comes back to support this channel and future projects. Now growing the Bartman's Bits community is important to me. So when you're done clicking on those links, come on back and click subscribe. And also don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified of any future videos that I release. Now if you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see me make, go ahead and leave it in the comments. And thank you for watching.